In this video, we're going to be exploring the interesting connection between quantum and music. As we'll see, there are actually many interesting similarities between acoustic and quantum waves. So by understanding one, we'll be able to understand the other a little better as well. To do this, we're going to be listening to one of the greatest composers of all time, as well as a piece created by myself and musician Paul Husky. So if you, like Paul, are a musician with questions about quantum, or anyone wondering about these topics, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's explore the connection between quantum and music. The first similarity is waves. Wave mechanics describe the properties we observe in both sound and quantum. With sound, for example, if you play a tone at a certain frequency and you use a device called an oscilloscope, you can actually see the shape of the wave that tone creates. If you play the tone at a different frequency, the shape of the wave changes as well. Now, quantum waves follow the exact same principles except for one key difference. Instead of the shape of the wave affecting the sound that we hear, it affects the probability of where we observe a particle. So if we take a quantum wave that looks like this, and we make several repeated observations, we can see that over time we observe more photons where the wave is the highest, and less where it is the lowest. If we look at the results from an actual quantum experiment, you can clearly see the wave pattern here. So ultimately, waves describe both sound and quantum, meaning they share many interesting properties, including our next similarity, superposition. Wave superposition is when two separate waves combine to form a new wave with different properties. A really cool way you can hear this with sound is if you take the two frequencies we heard before and you play them at the same time, do you hear that? There's a beat. By superimposing the two waves together, we've created a new wave with a new property called a beat frequency. Pretty cool, eh? Superposition is also an important concept for quantum as well. The best way to see this is with the most famous quantum experiment the double slit. This experiment is done by firing photons at a screen with two slits in it. Now, if you were to close one of the slits, you would end up with a wave that looks like this, or like this if you were to close the other slit. But if you were to open up both of the slits, then the waves from each of the openings superimpose onto each other, creating a new wave with a different shape. So superposition is an important concept for both quantum and sound. I hope you're beginning to see just how similar the two really are. A final similarity is interference. Interference is a type of superposition when two identical waves combine to form either an amplified wave called constructive interference or cancel each other out called destructive interference. An interesting experiment to observe this with acoustic waves is if you set up two speakers several meters apart and play the same frequency in each. Now, if you stand back and walk through the wave field, you can actually hear places that are twice as loud because of constructive interference and places where there's no sound at all because of destructive interference. Now, if you think I'm just using effects and you're questioning whether that microphone works without a wire, then I highly encourage you to do this experiment at home because it's a really cool effect to see for yourself. So for quantum waves, we've already seen an example of interference with the double slit. This pattern that we've been looking at the whole time is an interference pattern. But perhaps the most remarkable thing is when we only fire one photon at a time, we still observe this interference pattern. But then what is interfering with this photon if there's only one of them? Well, the only answer that makes sense is that the photon must be traveling through both slits simultaneously, causing it to interfere with itself. 
And it's this ability to be in multiple places at the same time that is one of the strangest realities of quantum physics. Now to put this all together, it's these concepts that allow us to construct quantum algorithms. A great example is Grover's algorithm, which can search through a database in 10 steps that would take a classical computer 100 steps. And the reason this is possible is because it uses quantum superposition and interference to search through multiple spaces at the same time. It's algorithms like this, which are why so many people are excited about the future of quantum computing. Now to see how this all relates to constructing a piece of music, let's hear from an actual musician, Paul Husky himself. Thanks, Travis. Hi, I'm Paul Husky. You've seen how quantum waves and sound waves share these interesting properties. Now, organizing these waves for a specific outcome is called quantum computing in one hand and music in the other. This is the first chord of the Allegretto from Beethoven's Seventh Symphony. Here's a sound wave from this bottom note. Here's this one and this one. High-pitched notes have shorter wavelengths, but notice how these waves overlap in a nice interference pattern. This creates a sense of stability. A chord like this, on the other hand, sounds random because of its complicated interference pattern, and Beethoven had little interest in complicated things. But he loved complexity. Oh, how do you create complexity? Well, if you can create a pattern that is both rich and comprehensible, you're on the right track. You can start with one rhythm, one note, one melodic wave. Then the wave repeats and a new wave overlaps beautifully with it. At this point, the pattern is very complex, but it never feels random. Quite the opposite, it feels inevitable. That's how Beethoven uses interference patterns to create beautiful complexity. Back to you, Travis. And it's these ideas that we tried to capture throughout The Coldest Place, a video created by myself and Paul to explore the connection between quantum and music. By showing the qubits, which we represent as opera singers, exhibiting waves, displaying superposition, and by interfering with each other, they're able to perform the calculation they weren't able to in their classical state at the beginning of the video. And while you can't actually hear a true quantum superposition, we tried to capture the feeling, the emotion, and the intensity of what a quantum calculation might be like. I'll include the link below if you haven't seen it yet. So there you have it an explanation of some of the interesting connections between quantum and music. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.